It's time to talk sports. It's time for the show. When you hear this song on the radio, it's time to tune in. Better act fast. Let me get that part of Potograph Sports Talk Radio. Starting now. Let's go. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 144 of Let Me Get That Potograph. As always, my name is the H, and joining me is my awesome co-host, Mr. Scott Rappaport. What's up, dude? Oh, coming off a weekend, <laughs> you know, uh, watching some good baseball. Yeah. Good NBA playoff games. We've oh, got yeah. a lot of stuff going on, man. How, you know, anything new and exciting down in your world? Uh, no, my son, uh, you know, it, it was a weird Easter this year, at least by the way, happy belated Easter to everybody and everything. Hope everyone had a good one. Happy, uh, uh happy Passover to yes. you know, all, all yes. of my people out there. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was a little different because my son is on spring break. So he's out down at the beach with my parents. So nice. my, my Easter was spent, I, I, you know, I didn't get the Easter bunny thing, you know, <laughs> none of that. So it was a really odd Easter. I spent it catching up, like you said, on a lot of awesome sport. Well, I spent, uh, I spent Saturday freezing my ass off cause my, uh, my son's spring league for soccer started this weekend and I'm happy <laughs> yeah. he scored, you know what, he scored his team's first goal of the spring league. And go. then, uh, next thing you know, he's not in there starting the second half. And I'm like, wait, now he's and don't get me wrong. He's not the fastest kid on the team by a long shot, uh, you know, so I'm looking around and like, he's not on the bench and he's not on the field. Okay. What the hell's going on? So I look over, <laughs> he's in net. Um, <laughs> and this is, this is the kid who like, you know, started doing the goalie training stuff in the fall and hated it and stopped. Yeah. And like our first thought was, Oh crap. Right. You know, cause again, he's also a short kid. So it's all, you know, and he can't really jump. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you know, it's like all right, all they gotta so do is kick the ball. Over. Yeah. yeah, it's like all right, all they gotta do is kick the ball over his head. And um, I'm like, all right, well, hopefully, hopefully the guys know just keep the ball away from the net, and we'll be fine. And we're like, we're you know, my wife and I are sitting there, we're like, what the hell is coach thinking yeah. putting them there? So yeah, you know, game's over, they wound up winning. You know, they were down by two at half, so they wound up coming back. He didn't let any goals. Had a couple of good saves, nice. and. You know, we we asked, you know, we were talking to the coach afterwards. We're all walking to the car together. And, you know, we're like, well, why did you end up putting Ethan in net? He goes, well, when I asked who wanted to play goalie, he was the first kid to raise his hand. It's like, I'll do it. I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what the heck? Like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Yeah. So freezing, you know, to freeze my ass off sitting through like, you know, 40 minutes worth of like, oh, God, oh, God, please don't let the ball get close. Please don't let the ball get close. Right. Yeah, um, and it turned it turned out okay. Well, there you go. Hey, yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, Jude just finished up his soccer. We're on to uh, well, a baseball is year round, but we're on to baseball now, and then uh, football here coming up soon. A lot of um, kid sports going on, kid sports ending, and everything, and a lot of great stuff going on in the pro leagues. And guys, we got an awesome show for you today. A jam packed one. As uh, there's quite a few interesting things going on in the hobby right now, and. Um, Scott, I want to I want to kick it off today with something that I talked about it a little bit on the show a long time back when they first when Tops first made the announcement of acquiring the Nippon League. Uh, we I talked about it a little bit on here about how you know about how it was Japanese version of basically Major League Baseball. I mean, it's, yeah. it's legit players. A lot of a lot of amazing talent is there. And I'd mentioned that Tops had acquired the license, and it'd be interesting to see uh, the reaction to the cards. Well, we've gotten the cards now. Tops Chrome <laughs> and Tops has come out. Yep. And oh my God, man! Um, well, it, it, it's incredible. Prices have uh, you know I've been looking at this for uh, you know three four weeks now, and the reason I started looking at it is because. You know, everyone knows I'm a diehard Cubs fan. Yeah. And, you know, the Cubs signed Saya Suzuki. And my Star first thought, the yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they did, considering how the, you know, the Kosuke Fukudome experiment, you know, <laughs> uh, wound up back in back in 08. And, yeah. you know, I still have my still got my Kosuke Fukudome jersey. It's not worth anything. So it's like, you know, no point in even trying to sell it. Right. So I'm surprised that, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, holy crap. Yeah. Like this guy, yeah. this guy can play. I mean, he's hitting, he's hitting 429. And granted, it's a small sample size, still really early in the season. But he's yeah. hitting 429, four home runs, 
that's tied for fourth in the majors. 11 RBIs also tied for fourth. His ops is 1.493, which is third. Um, batting average is fifth. So, like, I'm looking like, does this guy have any cards? And the next right. thing you know, I find out, like, holy crap, he's in he's in tops. He's in so, I, you know, what I what I saw, it's like, all right, I could pick up a box, you know. This is, and this is going back a couple weeks. I'm like, all right, I can pick up a box of this from, you know, you know, the Japanese eBay seller for, you know, 140 bucks, maybe 150. I kind of put it off. I'm like, nah, you know, do I really, do I really <laughs> want to, you know, I mean, he'll, he'll probably be in series two. He'll probably yeah. be in Chrome. And, you know, I looked again this morning and mm-hmm. I'll be damned. Like, I think the last, last box sold for like 400, 500 bucks. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a crazy jump. Well, it's helping a lot also with uh, Suzaki, the pitcher. I mean, let's let I want to I want to qualify one thing. That is where I think the big jump. Amazing. That is where I think the big jump came. Yeah, the pitching um, is amazing over there. But Suzaki, uh, for those un- unfamiliar, had uh, a perfect game, and then his next outing went eight innings of a perfect game, and the coach pulled him after eight, so he couldn't complete two perfect games in a row 17 straight innings i don't that's never been done in in no major. Anyway. I mean, there's no question but here's a but here's the thing about you know about the, the japanese league yeah you know it's legit it's a legit league huge you could take you could and that you know that's the reason like you know when when you're talking about like the olympics and things like that mm-hmm. um you know world baseball classic and there's like japan is always a contender always. yes and you could take the top couple of teams from you know the NPB and put them up against the top couple of teams in Major League Baseball and it's a the, dude it's it, it's going to be a coin toss it's a, yes, on who wins absolutely that. it is absolutely, absolutely going to be a coin toss yeah um no that's how good the talent we're talking about is here and I mean look Tops is making even before Fanatics acquired him and I don't know if Fanatics is altering this at all but. Even before the acquisition, Tops had announced that they were building a global headquarters over in Japan. Yep. So there's they're making a massive presence over there. Obviously, there's a big market for it, enough for them to want to acquire the license and build over there. They see massive growth in that area. This is uh, this is something where I think you're going to see a lot of these players start to make maybe this almost opens up a pipeline with Suzuki if he pans out especially I think it could open up a possible little pipeline from the internationals yeah. to the pros which is going to have a massive effect on some of these prospecting when you go globally people need to start looking at this hobby way outside of yeah. just the, just the big leagues they need to look at these almost niche market i call them kind of products that because that's where these guys are going like even now in soccer mls it used to be there's no one from the mls going anywhere now they're going to the premier yeah. league now they're moving on to massive stuff it's the same thing here i could see a big pipeline coming from this to major league baseball but just the the well, international presence it, that tops is making in japan is huge. think about it well think about it this way though you know Putting a, you know, putting a headquarters office there makes a lot of sense because not only, you know, obviously they have the NPB right now. Baseball's big over there. Huge, yeah. But look what else is big in Japan as well. Mm-hmm. Formula One is yep. huge. Insanely and guess, who has the, guess who's got the Formula One license? Yeah. Um, soccer is huge. Yes. And guess who... You know, guess who's got that, you know, yeah. at, you know, at least a piece right now of that yeah. soccer license and more coming later. Basketball is big over there and they don't, you know, they don't, have a, huge they don't have a huge league over but there. But the following is huge. The like jerseys is huge. Like jerseys in, in Japan are the jersey you wear, the nicer it is. It's a status symbol. in Japan. Yes. Like if you it, wear a court, a, an actual on court edition level jersey, you're looked at as as basically walking around here in like a like a ten thousand dollar suit, you know, like, you know, wearing wearing Gucci. Yes, exactly. Like it's that yeah. type of thing. It's a massive status symbol there. Yeah, and that's the and that's the thing. And even though even though Tops does not have the NBA license yet, it's coming. It's coming. So they I think they're positioning themselves in that, you know, in that huge market yep. where they already have pieces of it and they're getting pieces, you know, that are coming over the next couple of years. 
you know, they're positioning themselves for, you know, for real serious growth from that standpoint. And that's the, I think that's the real reason they put that headquarters, you know, yeah. why they're putting it there is, is because it's not just baseball, right? It's, you know, it's, it's all the other sports as well, with the exception of football yeah. um, and hockey, but they, you know, they, there's no plans on them to get the NHL license no. yet. Um, <laughs> look, I mean, you know, we, we joke somehow yeah. it's, it's coming. I know. Um, you know, so like I said, it just, it makes total sense, but yeah, there's no mm-hmm. Japan for some, there's no football market over there. There's no, 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 know, no. Yeah. There's no hockey market over there. It's just, you know, there might be one or two collectors, you know, that kind of stuff. It's not like baseball. It's not like basketball. I mean, I can't tell you like eBay sales. Oh yeah. The, the number of, the number of cards that I shipped to Japan for, yes. you know, baseball cards, stuff like that. It's, it's insane. Significant. Absolutely. I mean, it, you look at, uh, I mean, Ken Golden talked recently when uh, I interviewed him on this show talking about how the international market two years ago made up about two to five percent of his sales. And now uh, it's well over half, almost three fourths. So, I mean, if you look at that type of growth in the last couple of years, especially when you get to high end stuff and things like that, uh, you're seeing a massive jump. But this Nippon League, when they announced the Nippon League, I was interested to see how people would react to it. They they got really lucky that you had the two big guys right out the gate doing some amazing stuff that definitely helped, you know, the push. But um, yep. I think this is something that collectors should definitely take a look at because yeah. uh, well, I think, I think it, the, I think gonna the be reason cool. they, they went after it wasn't even because of these two, you know, the, no, no, no. Uh, Suzuki and Sasaki. It's like, all right, well, we, you know, we had 20 years of Ichiro and, yes. you know, I mean, the man is wildly popular over in Japan. And then after seeing what, you know, Otani has been doing mm-hmm. over here the last couple of years, it's like, all right, well, who's the well, next? Well, I mean, you've seen you know, it. Who's the you've next seen it guy? all over. You've seen it all over in all sports. Otani, then you see Luca coming um, from international basketball leagues. Like I, I mentioned. Well, right I'm talking about, I'm the, talking about strictly, strictly Japan. Okay. All right, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, Luca's not, you know, but, not but, but what I'm saying is that like you're seeing a massive trend of getting these leagues in other countries and securing those rights. And I think uh, with tops getting the basketball license, it wouldn't surprise me if some European German leagues and things like that end up basketball leagues end up getting picked up as well yeah. um, to make cards because well, the La Liga basketball, yes. you know, the Spanish basketball league is actually exactly. pretty competitive. It's, you know, uh, exactly. You know, that that's a solid league. Over exactly, there. but the but Japan definitely is um, making their footprint in the hobby right now, and the Nippon League is up and going in collecting, and the yeah. cards look great, and so far reception has been massive. But uh, Scott, you know, um, I was uh, going to the gas station the other day, stopped by a Wawa, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I had planned on just buying a donut or two and a little snack and something for Jude and everything. Looked up, and uh, right behind the counter, tops. Tops is now selling in Wawa. And in addition to that, they also dropped the news that, I mean, they've had it in some stores for a little while, but they dropped the news that they will be putting it in over, I believe it was 240 plus lids and uh, lids affiliates. Lids affiliates. Yeah. Like here, you know, like here it's the, you know, Chicago locker room, which is owned by, which is, you know, lid brand. Right. So you're going to have, but, uh, but at, but at Wawa, it looked to be hobby packs, and I'm interested to see what how the lids is going to work out because I don't I think it's going to be much more than an end cap. They went as far as to make a pretty big deal about this announcement and yeah. putting it and specifically putting in the words hobby. So I'm wondering if some of these shops are going to be walking up to the counter and almost having where the register and everything is a little mini card shop right behind yeah. the, the cashier. And yeah, I don't think they're going to be selling singles, but they're probably going to be doing boxes and packs and things like that. And for those, you know, for those that don't know, I've, you know, I've been fortunate that I've been able to travel extensively over the years and I, I'm familiar with Wawa, but for, you know, the people that are not on the East coast, Wawa is basically Russia without the nuclear weapons. Um, It's a a gas, (laughs) it's a gas station. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where like you can walk in and, and they, they actually have a pretty good, like, you know, Dude, their food demand sandwich. Yeah, I was gonna say their sandwiches and stuff like that are awesome. Um, you know, especially for 
a gas it's station. a very upper end gas station almost like mini quick fast food restaurant like where they make yeah. the food for you real quick and everything like that uh very much like a sheets if people are familiar with um, well again that's a, that's gonna be that's an east, east coast, coast. yeah too, so i don't know so. what you got out west guys i didn't see much maybe while i was out there but yes no. it is a gas station so we're seeing hobby packs and other stuff like that hitting wawa's as well as well as seeing the big imprint in lids uh it's kind of interesting to see fanatics roll out a little bit of their outside distribution outside of the main source you know yeah it looks like they're kind of testing a little a little bit or maybe they're showing you what some of the new ways to find cards are going to be it could be, you know, stop in, fill up your tank, grab a sandwich and grab a pack of cards. Yeah. Um, it's only a matter of time before, you know, the tops products are going to be available in your grandmother's living room. Yeah. And or maybe maybe your kitchen. I don't know. But they, right. you know, they seem to be expanding the distribution. Now, the downside is expanded distribution yeah. usually means expanded print Printing. runs. Yes, because they're not going to yeah. take away from the breaking and everything else that's no. bread and butter. No, and they're not going to take and they're not going to take away from existing retail distribution either. Exactly. They're not going to be they're not going to take away from Target and Walmart and you know Meyer no. and you know all those places. They're in fact they're probably going to wind up expanding. You know, you used to be able to get cards at Dick's Sporting Goods. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they went away for a while, and I got a feeling they're coming back. Barnes and Noble. Yes. Um, you know, has been carrying stuff. So you know what we're what we're going to see is an expansion of the distribution, but because of that. We're going to see an expansion of the print runs as well. And that's mostly going to affect, you know, your base type yes. cards. The problem is, you know, because you've got the, you know, your numbered content and things like that, it's going to reduce the odds of pulling anything yeah. from a numbered content. Look what to- look what Tops did with Chrome Update this year. Yeah. Three additional packs, but the odds, the odds were of hitting a, you know, even a refractor, but they also expanded the set. Mm-hmm. where they added one purple refractor in every pack. Yeah. So now instead of four, you know, instead of the four, you have three cards and a purple refractor. Right. Then they took the all-star game cards out of the main hundred card set mm-hmm. and moved it to its own set. So, okay, then you get, a, that's another thing you got to chase. Yeah. And instead of two insert sets of 50 cards, or I'm sorry, of 25 cards each, they upped it. It's still two insert sets, but one of them is 70 cards. That's obviously the 70th right. anniversary. And then the other one is 30 cards. So you want, which, which is the black gold. I love, mm-hmm. I, I guess. Oh I yeah. Love no, that, that was that great. Is, Thank that you was for bringing awesome. that back. Yeah. But because of it, it diluted the product. Yeah. 2019. Good example. I opened up like 600 plus boxes of right. Chrome update. And I, I'd say probably nine out of every 10 boxes had either a refractor or an autograph. And it was a seven pack box. So great odds, great, you know, but because of that, you know, you know, 2021, they, the print run doubled and, or sorry, 2020, the print run doubled. And then 2021, it got skewed because of the additional packs. Plus the, you know, it's, I mean, the whole thing's, the whole thing's a mess, but it's going to kill the value of, a lot of you know the guys that are like chasing the base rookies and collecting right. massive amounts and and i don't think um, it's going to be on like and i mean we're not saying this is going to be on every product they're not going to be putting all products in these stores it's going to no. be mostly the lower and entry level stuff they may have it some lids and stuff maybe a couple of the higher end things and well, i don't think i don't think you're going to see like dynasty exactly that's that, that's what i'm saying like you're not going to yeah. see that type of stuff a couple hundred dollar boxes i don't think you see there i think it's going to be a lot of the the lower end. Well, stuff. I think but it lids, depends on. Lids is interesting. Lids, well, hold, blah, on, hold, blah, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. A second. <laughs> so, you know, what you said about, you know, you don't even think you're going to find a couple hundred dollar boxes. If they're carrying hobby products, it's, well, you know, yeah. now we may be talking about, you know, like 2018 prices where, you know, you can get a box of Pops Chrome for under 150 yeah. bucks. But nowadays, where it's, you know, a standard hobby box is what, 250 resale right yeah, now? Yeah, but I, th- I think they're um, going to be doing it by the pack. Mostly. I don't think you're going to see a lot of boxes for sale. Well, but but I, I mean, don't know. We don't know. But if they're doing it by the pack, the packs are coming to the stores probably in boxes. They're not going to do a special oh, yes. you know, packaging for it. So there's nothing that says, hey, I want, you know, 24 packs, you know, and they just wind up giving you an entire box. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I, I, I do think the one scary thing is, you know, we're seeing more and more areas of distribution come in. We didn't even mention GameStop, you know, I mean, a lot no. of different stuff is coming in. And so 
I don't know. Maybe it does get pulled from Walmart and Target and they keep, you know, a little less there and a little more everywhere else and they spread it out as opposed to just as much or I don't know. I know back when the the craze was going on and shootings were happening over retail and all that crap. I know yeah. for a fact because I contacted the the corporate offices that meetings were happening discussing pulling them from the shelves and taking them out of stores entirely. Now I'm well, sure Target did. Target yeah. did move the you know the desirable products that everybody was chasing so online. to online only. Yeah, and, and they that's... started they've started filtering back into the stores in smaller quantities. But yes, um, it's but still they, they put limits that. on them, and you know I like could see them pulling away from that a little bit to expand these different channels. But uh, it was definitely interesting. Uh, the lids one was not expect was expected one thousand yeah. percent in my opinion. Well, I fanatics. For those thought, that don't know, fanatics also owns a piece of lids. Yes. So that yeah that was that was probably the the one that was the most expected. But Wawa was quite interesting. Wawa was a little a bit of a shock, and uh, I'm definitely going to be stopping in Sheets too to see if <laughs> to see if Panini goes after Sheets. I don't know. Maybe we'll have a Wawa and Sheets battle for Panini and Tops. Who knows? It's only I guess you know it's probably only a matter of time before Seven Eleven starts carrying them too. There you go. Um, yeah. Although maybe maybe they did Wawa just because it is more regional. You know, maybe they're not doing some of the the national ones just from a from an inventory standpoint. You know, because they're going to have to spread that out. But when they start showing up in Dunkin' Donuts, then, you know, we're in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And, of course, guys, we'll keep you updated with that. But, uh, Scott, now, man, it's time to move on to the segment that is taking the nation by storm. You guys know the deal. It's time for movers and shakers. And, uh, Scott, it's NBA playoff time, which we're yep. talking about a lot later. Baseball's in full gear, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of players making some major impacts in a lot of sports right now. I'm gonna let you kick off this week's mover and shaker. Where are you going? Who you got? All right, so I am gonna roll in the NBA because it is playoff time, and I'm gonna go with the man who has been filling in for Luka Doncic. Yes, and as Jalen Brunson. Woo! Underrated. Well, yeah. Oh, you said woo, but then you cut it off. What do you think I was gonna? Go, who do you think I was going with? Well, no, I just love the pick. I oh, just okay. All right. It's a, well, you you cut off the whoop, and it's like, uh, wait, what? No. no. Um, you know, Brunson puts up forty-one points in Monday night's game, which you know, as of recording, that was last yeah. The kid is ridiculously <laughs> underrated. Oh yes. I, I'm sitting on ridiculous quantities of his yep. stuff from eighteen nineteen because. Nobody was buying it, yeah. you know, if it's one of those, you know, and I've always been one of those guys where if I, if I got something and it, you know, it's, it's like an NBA rookie and it sells for like a dollar, I'm just going to throw it in a box yeah. and see what happens because mm-hmm. I'm not really, you know, even if it drops to nothing, I'm not really losing anything. Losing out it. On it. Yeah. Yeah. I opened, I opened so much prism back in 1819. I probably, I probably have 30, you know, base just sitting around plus whatever color I, you know, I've got, but Brunson is one of those guys that has been so underrated for years. Yes. And, and he's shown that, and the thing is, in this, and that especially is true in the hobby, and he has shown the potential for all those years, but it just yes. never translated. That's a, that's exactly right. And you know, especially playing a, you know, right now, you know, they're playing a team that is actually really good, even though yes. Mavs are the higher seed. It's you know the Utah Jazz. Never want to count out the Jazz when it, you know, especially playoff time. Yeah. But Brunson has just shown so much more of those flashes of greatness that, you know, we've seen occasionally over the years. He just needs a a regular place to showcase that. Yeah. And I would love to see him get more playing time. But I, I my big fear is that it's not going to happen in Dallas. So the question is, does he play second fiddle for a while longer or is he going to wind up moving, you know, to another team where he's going to get the, you know, the better playing time? Yeah, um, I, I love the pick. You know? I love this pick. Brunson um, was always a guy that I thought I always every year uh, on this show and all over any show that I talk about or any live when I'm on whatnot or whatever always have a group of players from every draft class five or six of them that aren't the main guys that are these guys that you're talking about where you throw in the common box that i think okay 
I'm going to keep all of them and I'm not going to sell them in bulk because I think they have that potential. Brunson was one of those guys that I kept for ages because you saw it, but you knew, like you said, he was behind Luca. He was behind all this. You knew he wasn't going to get to playing time. And he did take a year to develop, but you could see the flashes right from his rookie year. And to see him come into a team that this Mavs team without Luca had looked lost at times throughout the Mm -hmm. year, like completely lost right now. This kid has completely decided to put this team on his back while Luke is out and the team's following in his foot. They're following him. I mean, he legit looks like a floor leader on the court in between timeouts and everything. So I love, he should be, he should be the, you know, he's a, he's a guard. The guards are supposed to be the floor leaders You know, they're they're the ones that are supposed to be dictating. But on a lot of teams, it's not like that these days. No, not at all. It's nice to see. And I I think that it's a wonderful hobby pick because I do think one thing you said that I really want to touch on is is where he's going to be. Because that contract is going to be up soon. He's he's not a top 10 pick. So he's not, you know, one of those protected option type of players. He's going to have much more leeway to get out of a contract and go somewhere if he wants to. Um, There's no team option type deals unless he had signed some extension I'm unaware of but I don't yeah think I don't, so. I'm not sure about um, that but if he's on his rookie contract still which I'm 99% sure he is this uh, might be I think this is the final year yeah so 18 19 19 20 20 21 21 20 so this if they I think they're what they're typically three years three years kind of, yeah with three with years a with a option. fourth option yeah. um so I think this is the fourth I think this was the fourth option yeah um, but I and don't think they signed a you know, they signed a longer. Well, they you know, better. Uh, they've they've got to make a decision to either readjust this team and get both Luca and him on the floor and figure out a way, or and that's restructuring the entire team around it. You've either got to decide that hey, I want to play Luca, Brunson, and then one other guy, or you got to move him. And that's where yeah. I think his value is because I think that they're not going to do that and they're not going to play him together. And they're, and that's where yeah. I think Brunson becomes incredible trade bait to get the guy for Luca that they want. And he could go to a team where he yeah. could be that number one star. And if he does, then this value increase that we're seeing right now that is going to, once the season's over, level off at a higher yeah. price point than it was before. No, I exactly. And I just is incredible I just value the, for next year. I just pulled up the contract. He is an unrestricted free agent yep. after this season is over. And he's only, I mean, dude, it's like, this is the, I mean, this is a crazy team friendly contract. $1.8 million this mm-hmm. year. Oh, is what yeah. he's making. It was yeah. a four-year, six point one million dollar contract, and it's. I mean, it's crazy, and I think he's he's showing uh, yeah. exactly what he what he should be because there's you know there's teams are out there. I don't think he's going to get a max contract. No, um, not maybe not yet, but I think he know, could get that contract, and and uh, I think uh, if you give him a full year to be a guy, yeah. a starter on a team that has some potential, and let him. Uh, let him play his ball. I think yeah. he could play his way into a max contract. This kid, well, I, I think we see, we see a twelve to fifteen million a year contract. Yeah, in a lot of them, and I think that I mean that's you know that's eight times more than what he's making now. Yeah, um, which you know I'm sure you know is, is always it good. Could be a team that's not got Luca on it, which is taking away hobby value. You know, obviously, yeah. if you're looking at the Mavs, you're looking at Luca first, and so you know it, it's all, he's always going to be playing second fiddle, whether it be on the court or in the hobby world you know to luca right there so you know it's going to be interesting to see where he goes but no man i i absolutely love that pick thank you, what do you got this week? I, I can't go without anyone in the nba playoffs because uh there's there's so many different options that i could choose right now but man uh it, it is getting a little warmer here i got a hoodie on right now but uh <laughs> my son is at the beach and um when he's not in the ocean he's having a pool party i gotta go with jordan pool man yeah Jordan Poole is now I know it's one of the more obvious choices, probably, but I'm just going to pat myself on the back because I've been telling you guys on this damn show since he was drafted that the dude was absolutely amazing. And to keep his cards, him and Bane, I told you guys for years and he's finally putting up these numbers 
and putting on a show that the confidence through the roof. I oh, think 100, got, 100%. Yeah, I mean, the confidence is, is, is beyond anything I could imagine. This is what I knew he had and what I said all along. A lot of these guys on the Warriors and a lot of these rookies are just stuck behind great players already playing. That Curry, roster, Clay, Draymond, that roster I mean, they it, have is yes. so deep. Right. So to, to stand out, we were just talking about playing second fiddle. You can't even play fourth fiddle with no. with a team like Golden State because they've got so many great players. And so he was always going to be lost in the shuffle there until now when he got this opportunity to finally show what he could do. And what better time to do it than the playoffs, following it up with an amazing second game. And I, Jordan Poole is... He had an amazing first game too. That's what I'm saying. Two straight. Great. Yeah, but you want to know you want to know what the most dangerous thing about Jordan Poole is? What? With with Golden State, Steph Curry is coming off injury. Yep. And they're, you know, they're limiting his playing time just like they did with Klay Thompson during the, you know, at the end of the regular season just to get him back up to speed. But with Poole playing as well as he's been playing, they don't have to rush Curry back. No. Which means the deeper that they go into the playoffs, the less abuse that Curry will have taken, yep. you know, up until that point. So, you know, if they make it to the finals and I think they, I think they can, and I'm, yes. you know, it's going to be tough getting past Phoenix, but I think with everybody healthy and everybody playing, I, I think they absolutely will. I, Wiggins um, is stepping up. He, he was almost yeah. one of my picks too. Wiggins is showing. I mean, I never thought he, he never wanted to be a number one guy. Uh, he wanted to be that role player. He's stepping up real well, but pool. Yeah. Like you said, Pools keeping Curry to where he can come in, play 24 minutes, score like 30 yep. points, and then go sit down. Exactly. And, and, and that's that's what they need. And um, Kerr knows what he's doing. He knows what he's got out of his players. But I love seeing Poole finally getting this playing time, finally getting this time to shine. And it's only going to, like you said, I mean, he's in, you know, they still have him for a few years. They've got him. And they're a type of team where that roster, so many of those guys – are positionless players that you can yeah. fit you can fit pool on that court in almost any lineup they want to um and so i i think like you said they've got a chance to go very deep in the playoffs i think pool is going to be a significant factor the rest of the way because i do think curry is banged up a lot more than people want to know or yeah. that they're they're letting people know and so i think i, I do think he's going to have a lot more minutes as they keep going, and I don't see them being stopped by a team anytime soon. Uh, no. So I, I see Jordan Poole stuff just continuing to go through the roof. Yeah, and I think it's going to be, and it may be one of those situations where even if Curry is completely 100%, but if Poole continues to play the way he's been playing, it may just be a situation where, I mean, I, I hate to say it for all the Curry people, but that he they just don't rock the boat. Right. And he just continues to come off the bench and let, you know, and let pool start, you know, but again, that roster is so deep that, you know, one guy goes down, there's, you know, three other guys that are of amazing quality, just waiting to, you know, to step up and they don't even, and that's not even including, you know, I mean, Wiseman's out. Exactly. You know, once they get him back, they don't have a real big man. They don't yeah. have, you know, they don't have the height. Yeah. You know, once he's healthy and I'm hoping I'm hoping he's not going to be, you know, that draft class, you know, right. Odin. Yeah. That it's, you know, it's like it's like Zion's turning out to be, um, right. <laughs> you know, from the year before. But the if he's healthy yeah. and they can get the they get his size in there. Yeah. Well, you know, along with everybody there, I, I think that's going to be an unstoppable team. Me too. And that's where I think Jordan Poole's just got a ton of value because I think he's still going to put on these games, even with Curry healthy, where he's just he, he's got the confidence. And I think yeah. he's he's going to have one of these playoff runs to be remembered on. Uh, it's up to him to follow it up, obviously, and keep that work going through into the next year. But he's shown flashes of, of this for a long time. And so uh, Jordan Poole, my mover and shaker for this week. He is my he is my early on favorite for uh, 
finals MVP if he can keep yeah. up the play and they wind up winning. No, absolutely. And, prior, and I, I would think you'd have to put him in a category for most improved. Got to be close to there, uh, possibly against some other guys that we talked about a little later on in the show. But, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I definitely think so. And it, it's it's absolutely possible. The dude is he is on fire the confidence factors through the roof he is locked in his zone. and there's these players you see it all the time it comes playoff time and they just get into this zone that's different than anything yep. else and, and a, a common person like ourselves just doesn't understand it but i think jordan Poole's locked in so uh, he's a massive mover and shaker and someone that uh i would definitely be grabbing because i think there's still a lot of room to go up for him Oh, yeah. No, I, I agree with that 100%. That, that he was my number two this week, but I wanted to highlight Brunson just because of the uh, he, he's people notice pool. Right. Um, Brunson's right. just kind of like there. Yeah, no, um, Brunson. Brunson's way under the radar. He's uh, yeah. way. And, and it's not Golden State, a flashy team. You know, it's the Mavs. It's Luka or nobody really. You know, no, well, they got the flashy. Guys. They got the flashy owner. Yeah. Yes, they have. Exactly. They got the flashy yeah. owner to make up for the uh, the non flashy team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, yo, we will be right back in just a few moments. You know what time it is. Time to pay the bills. And welcome back, everybody, to episode 144 of Let Me Get That Potograph. And uh, Scott, there's um, something going on in the hobby right now that's uh, quite interesting to me. And I, I wanted to bring it up to you. And uh, I think the it's a discussion that needs to be had because it's something that's going to be need to be clarified here in the near future. And uh, what I'm talking about exactly is Tops just dropped their first Overtime Elite release, which for those unfamiliar, Overtime Elite is the uh, youth basketball program. Consider it like an AAU almost league for young kids that haven't even gone to college or anything like that yet. Yep. And this is basically um, trying to create almost a uh, minor league NBA system. Well, I put out the Tops Chrome Overtime Elite Edition lately. And while the cards look absolutely amazing, the resale value is great on them. Yep. There was one thing I noticed, Scott, that really was interesting to me, and that is that the rookie card logo is on these cards. Yeah. That's that's gonna create a problem, right? Well, I mean, maybe, maybe not. I think it all depends on on how you look at it. Now, the problem is this is the first year of the overtime elite program. This is also the first year of the overtime elite product. Yes. With tops. The it, so it really depends on what Tops is trying to do, putting the rookie card logo on there. Are they trying to say that there are rookies in with the Overtime Elite program? Right. Or are they just, you know, are they trying to get it to consider rookie card overall? And I, I think if they're trying, if they're, you know, if the whole point of putting it on there was, hey, they're Overtime Elite rookies, because this does, if you look on the backs of these cards, it actually tells you what draft class they're eligible. For. Yeah. And there's guys going in, there's a lot of 2022 there's uh, but there's also 2023 2024 yeah. which means that you know these people are going to be in you know with the program for multiple years so when they come out with next year's product the players that were in this year's product will they have the rookie card logo and if the answer is no then i i would say it's kind of i don't want to say it's pointless but it may be you know for the 2023 and 2024 class guys you know, who are going to have multiple cards within the Overtime Elite, you know, product over a couple of years. Uh, maybe, you know, the rookie card logo just denotes their first card. Right. Um, and it's got nothing to do because they, you know, again, once they wind up in the NBA, if they wind up in the NBA, they are, you know, going to have a whole host of cards that have the rookie card. And see, logo this is it. my, but they see, this is my question. Like with tops, I mean, they, they already have it with baseball. You have the, the Bowman's, the first Bowman's and prospect yeah. cards. And then you have the, the rookie cards. It just seems odd to me to put out a basketball product like this and to put a rookie card logo on it as opposed to some type of other designation, like first OTE or something, you know, like whatever yeah. it is, like I, putting that rookie card stamp on it. Like you said, a, uh, let's take like the, the Thompson brothers, like Eamon, Eamon and his brother. If yeah. those guys end up going to the, the NBA, which it looks like they probably will. Yeah. Um, and so and they're, some, they're, 
And they're guys in the 2023. Yes. Class. Yes. So we'll see cards for them next year if they do well, an OTD product. Yeah. Right. Well, the league was a success, so I assume that the cards are going to continue coming. But let's take them, for example, say they make it to the league. Well, yeah. then you're putting out, they're going to be, like you said, they're going to have a whole slew of cards with a rookie card logo on them. So Correct. then where do collectors start the designation of, okay, well, which is this rookie? Is this an OTE rookie? Are they looked at like Bowman's? Like uh, the, t- in my, in my opinion, bad. OTE needs yeah. to get the rookie card part out of it and come up with another, another name for that. Like I, I don't like using rookie card. Like it, yeah, it and I think that um, I think that it's gonna you know the the collectors are gonna see it as you know probably akin to the first Bowman yeah um, so you know, do in I. baseball and you know whether or not you agree with the rookie card being used at least it's I mean I, I would say that you know I'm glad they put something on there Me too. you know to kind of denote the you know hey this is the first release and granted you look at the card design it changes every year and things like that you can always tell by that but you know there's just something on there but i i think it's gonna i think it's gonna not necessarily cause confusion because you know when these guys eventually do make it to the nba you know is there going to be the big arguments because there's a lot of people like when they go to sell their you know first bowman cards they they refer to them as rookie, they refer to them as rookie cards and it you know most people don't care because they know exactly right. you know they know what they're buying they know what they are but you know especially new people who are new to the hobby it, it can cause some confusion it you know i've, I've actually seen some anger yeah. over, you know, like, oh, it's not a rookie card. It's not a rookie card. No, it's, it's our oh, first, yeah. you know. Um, give some, uh, give, a, give, hey, give a collector anything to get angry about. They'll get angry, trust me. Yeah, I mean, this isn't exactly the, uh, you know, Jordan versus LeBron debate. Right. As far, right. As, ang- as far as anger level goes. Yeah. But it's, it's one of those things where I, I, I mean, I just don't know. I mean, I'm indifferent towards it. Right. Personally, because I know I know what I'm looking at, right. you know, and the the educated people in the hobby know what they're looking at. So, I, I mean, I, I really, I, I don't really have an opinion. I'm glad, I'm glad there's something on the card though, denoting that it is their first card. Whether or not the rookie card designation was on there, and it is, it is a different RC logo. Yes. Than you know, than they've used in the past. It's you know the. Obviously, well, it's different than the baseball one that they use, but that's I actually like it. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's so why. Um, now, obviously, the baseball one is very specific to Major League Baseball. I do like this logo, and I just think with the idea that Overtime Elite is trying to become a minor system for basketball, that yeah. that's really what they're trying to be. I I would like it if in the future and ta- and maybe they do this, maybe they hear some feedback. And I know a lot of people listen to the show that do work for top. So maybe they listen yeah. to some feedback and decide this or not. I would like to see more of a, you know, they already use like the parallel where you've got the OT logo, OTE yeah. logo all in the background. I'd like to see a, a first OTE or something along those lines or some way to designate that this is their, quote unquote rookie for overtime elite, but not attach the word rookie to it because I don't like I just don't like that in the hobby because it not necessarily confusion, but it's just one of those things that let's keep rookies as rookies and not try and add so many more into the mix and not make it so freaking confusing. You know, yeah, no, right. I, I agree with that. The only, you know, my my biggest issue now with that is they've already set the precedent of putting the rookie card logo on there. So if they exactly. were to change in next year's product and call it, you know, first OTE or first card or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. And it's not the same logo that was on this year's product right. or, you know, from all the new guys. I mean, does it devalue? The, I don't know. Previous, I mean, it could be version. You never know. I mean, it's also the debut set. So it could be one of those where the debut sets more highly coveted because it's the only time they used it. You know, you, you never really know with <laughs> collectors how it's going to hit. But overall, I'd like to see the OTE just change it a little bit. But I'm saying like you can take certain things where like that debut edition uh, yeah. for F1, for example, the 2020 F1s, you're seeing yep. even the base cards of those as it's the debut edition of the Formula One becoming valuable just like any yeah. any debut set that you know has staying power does and so i think this one if ote which the league was a success 
And so far, the cards have been a, gr a huge success. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it uh, keeps up. But the cards have been an amazing success so far. It's going to come down, uh, obviously, to how many of these guys truly make it. If the overtime yeah. elite program turns out to be a great filter into the NBA, which it could be. It's got the power behind it. And like I said, the first season, by all reviews and accounts and from all critics and all the people that really followed this uh, said it was a tremendous success um yeah. so i have no reason to believe that they won't keep it up but it was quite well, interesting we'll to me when i saw the rookie we're gonna i mean we're gonna find out in a couple months here because there's yeah. you know a lot of those guys are 2022 draft eligible so you know are they gonna give you know how many guys that came from you know g league ignite yeah. uh you know wound up getting drafted last year because that was their first year of being you know of doing that yeah. So I'm curious as to, you know, what the breakdown is going to be with, uh, you know, draft picks coming from Ignite versus OTE. Yeah. Um, and whether an international and the regular college. Yeah. Like it's going to be interesting. And whether, well, but I, I'm, ju I'm just comparing, you know, OTE right, and Ignite right, right, because right. they're, they're the two that are really comparable to each other. Yeah. I'm curious if, if it, one of the two of them is going to, and I think if, if it's going to happen, I think it's going to be Ignite, but yeah. one of the two of them is going to disappear. Yeah. Um, you know, because of the success and Ignite, you know, goes away and everybody winds up going OTE. No, I completely agree. And I think the fact that OTE does have this presence everywhere else in the card world and it yeah. doesn't, things like that, I think could be major swaying factors in terms Well, I also of think because popularity. OTE is a multi-year program. Yes. Whereas okay. Ignite was never designed to be no. a multi-year program. It was, hey, you're done with high school, you know, and you can't go to the NBA yet because yeah. you need to be out for a year. Yeah, come so, chill here. Yeah. yeah, come chill here for a year. It's, you know, it's basically a paid version of colleges one and done. Yes. And, you know, whereas OTE truly is a development, uh, you know, league oh, yeah. and a development program. So, you know, I think if I had to pick one with staying power, I would say I would say OTE is definitely the, the one I'd go with. But um, we'll, you know, we'll definitely be watching the NBA draft, yeah. uh, you know, this year to fight, you know, uh, just to see. Who's? I mean, we're watching it for other reasons too, but we're you know we're definitely gonna be watching it to see how the comparisons go between you know the guys coming from OTE and the guys coming from Ignite. Oh, absolutely! So. It's going to be fun to follow, and then uh, it's also going to be fun to follow uh, see what happens with the the rookie card logo next year if they yep. do anything with it, and um, if anything changes or if they're treating this as like you said, since it's a multi year system and everything. I mean, when they if they eventually do college cards, are they going to start having college? rookies too and then pro rookies and then ote rookies you know what happens yeah. who knows we'll see i mean we'll see seems like they're throwing the rookie card logo on um on those it's just i'm one of those people that when it gets to the rookie card there's already so many different i mean not confusions for me but for a lot of people that don't pay attention to it there's so much confusion on what's a rookie what's a true rookie what's this that it, just adding more confusion into the mix is something that i uh, is something I think we can do without <laughs> in yes. the hobby, but um, you know, we'll see what they do. But uh, Scott, before we wrap the show up today, um, just wanted to touch on one thing real quick, a uh, little more, a uh, little more somber tone here, but um, wanted to reach out and just take a moment to uh, remember Stu as uh, as as of recording the day before was um, three years that uh, he lost his battle with cancer. Um, and so I just want to take a few minutes here to remember Stu and talk about Stu and everything, because, uh, you know, obviously that we, when we started the show and everything, it was just something fun to do. We never in a million years expected the hobby to ever <laughs> take off. Like when we started the show, we'd, I've told you the story, we'd start and we'd like have to sit down and be like, okay, are we going to just talk about redemptions today? What, what are we going to what are we talking about and, yeah. and 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 then look look at it now uh you know there's breaking news every week there's all that i mean it's it's turned into something that we could have never imagined when we started this and there was nothing else out there besides you know maybe one two other shows and Stu meant a lot to me meant a lot to a lot of listeners and uh and you know i put a couple of photos up on um, Facebook on my own personal page that was talking about um, Stu and 
I'm, I'm pretty sure I I'm pretty sure I took uh, at least one of those pictures, <laughs> That's which was, what I was you know, gonna say. Kinda, yeah, which was kind of cool. Yeah, I um I posted those, and when I was done posting them, I looked at them and I realized that you had took taken a couple of them from the very first national, and I thought that that was uh. No, we very should say not, not the first. Cool. You, we should clarify yes. not the first national, but our, your our first your national. first national yes. yeah. and our and our national, and then and the one time that we got to go to the national together is uh, obviously he wasn't able to go to the next one. So yeah, um, it, it it was pretty cool to see that you were the one that took those pictures, but I just wanted to um, just take a take a few minutes to remember Stu here because he was. Uh, he had such a beautiful passion for the hobby. He would, if he saw how the hobby was now and where the show and everything is and where everything's gone, I, I would like to think that he would be happy with it. Um, and I would like, and I know he would be happy with the hobby and the community because he was all, all about the community. And that's really why we started the show was because yeah. we wanted to take our opinions and stuff and and do more than just type online. We wanted to talk to people. We wanted to talk to all the listeners. We wanted to, you know, talk to each other and have these conversations and, you know, it not him not being able to be here for this part of uh the hobby and this kind of uptrend's always been something that um I think about all the time, but uh I think well, about like every think, day, buddy. I like to think that he's, you know, he's still seeing what's going on. Oh, he definitely is. You know, and he's and he's looking down and just smiling as to, yep. you know, uh, you know, to everything that's transpired over the last, you know, couple of years and the way that not just the show, but, you know, the, the yeah, hobby in general and, um, you know, like that has, has grown and, you know, bringing in, you know, more people and, you know, more families and, yeah. you know, things like that. So I... I'd like to think that he's just looking down and smiling and saying, yep, you know, we're good. We're all good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, me too. It's, uh, it's just always, it, it's something that I, I always think about and, um, it, you know, it's a, it's a touchy subject and, um, but I did want to take today to remember as it, it is, it also was, uh, a couple weeks right before that we had him on, um, the show, uh, one last time. And so, uh, I'll, probably put up a link to that this week to, for everybody to check out as well as it was a uh, a really touching and beautiful episode but um just wanted to take a moment to uh reach out and uh, tell everybody um definitely if you haven't listened to uh some of the earlier episodes of the show when Stu uh was here to be able to do them definitely check him out because he was a wonderful wonderful member of this hobby that touched hundreds and thousands of people's lives and was so passionate about this industry and did a lot for my life and reignited a passion in the hobby for me that I always had that I never lost but he was able to reignite it to a level that took it to where I am today so I'm forever grateful for him for that as it completely changed mine my son's life and everything else so love you buddy trying to do everything uh, I can to make you proud but uh just wanted to put that in here uh, and I think it's a I think it's a great way to end the show. With that said, we are going to end this uh, episode <laughs> of Let Me Get That Potograph. Um, once again, I'd like to thank our awesome sponsors: Vanity Slabs, Vintage Break, Card Ladder, and Card Crusade. Could not do the show without you guys. And of course, remember to check out Letter Rip, amazing box of WWE Prism last week. If you guys saw. Um, with the Hogan Goldberg Dual Auto. We've got an amazing box coming up this week. Um, so definitely check that, that out. And of course, Hobby Hotline and Hobby Hotline Overtime every Tuesday and every Sunday. And uh, the Hobby in 60, which you can find on Vintage Breaks also. And of course, I'll be live on the whatnot uh, most of the week. But um, Scott, another great episode, my man. Oh, yeah. Always fun, Drew. Absolutely. Well, guys, we'll be back next week. But until then, you know the deal. Keep ripping those packs, pulling those hits, and we'll see you then. Peace!